Today's video is sponsored by Hisense. There is something magical about local multiplayer. Don't get me wrong, online multiplayer was a huge deal when it was introduced and obviously it plays a very large role in gaming today with making competitive games so much easier to get in and find matches, being able to play with friends across the world, but there is something irreplaceable about the experience of sitting right next to the person you're playing with. Whether that's working together in a co-op shooter, going 1v1 in a fighting game, or having a group of friends together for Mario Party or a side-scrolling beat-em-up. The feeling you get when you're physically around other people and you're working together to overcome some kind of really tough challenge or all having a good laugh after something ridiculous happened in game, it's just something that I don't think can ever be fully recreated in an online setting. Sadly though, it hasn't really been the focus as much for a lot of games anymore, and there's a couple good reasons why. I mean, obviously, again, online multiplayer is such a big deal and it's so much more convenient for multiple people to get together. And from a visual and UI standpoint, it's a lot easier for everyone to see their individual viewpoints they have to care about on their own respective screens than having to deal with a split screen situation or a camera panning out to see everything. Trust me, I grew up playing on a small TV with friends doing four player local GoldenEye and we had to sit right up in front of that TV no matter what anyone was telling us safety wise what was the right move to do. And that is what is so cool about playing on a projector setup. The thing that I got going on behind me is the Hisense L5G and they call it a 4K TV setup and it makes sense to an extent, but really it is a projector setup. It is a short throw projector that comes bundled with a screen. So it's all in one. You don't have to order anything separately. You're given specific instructions for how they fit together, the optimal distances for setting everything up. And functionally, aside from the fact that it's a projector, it works like a TV. It runs Android TV, so you can use apps directly on it. It's got three HDMI ports. So you're able to plug in multiple units at once. Aside from the basic mechanism of how the image is being displayed on the screen, because unlike a traditional projector where you might get worried about accidentally, you know, getting up in front of the display and blocking things, it's set up right in front of the screen so there's no real travel distance going on. You don't have to worry about stuff getting in the way. I've worked with a couple different projector setups in the past, and one of the things that has always stood out to me is how much more interesting it feels for large-scale local multiplayer stuff. I mean, not just counting things like having a nice big screen to make use of for split screen, but even when you're playing multiplayer games that don't rely on breaking up the image like a fighting game or a beat-em-up, there's something about the energy that comes with a projector and the larger screen size that you're able to do with this kind of setup. Now, as far as how this particular unit handles gaming, uh, it really is geared in that general direction. This is a 4K TV that's capable of 60 hertz refresh while in 4K mode, but if you drop the resolution, it can support as high as 120. It supports HDR10 for better color in games, auto low latency mode to make sure that when you plug in a gaming system, it knows that it's a gaming system and prioritizes giving you the fastest response time possible and its built-in speakers support Dolby Atmos. Now, again, this is an ultra short throw projector, so it's designed to go really close to where the screen is instead of having to be set up from a far distance, which is not only handy because you don't have to worry about people getting in the way, but it also just makes for, I think, a much cleaner setup, and it's much easier to build a room around it, as we've done with this wall behind me. I mean, you can see the projector behind me just lighting up that wall right there. And when it comes to the screen that comes with the projector, that actually comes in two different sizes. The one behind me is the 100-inch screen, which is actually the smaller of the two. Uh, if you want to go all out and get the biggest display possible, they offer a 120 inch option as well. Another thing that's nice for the fact that we're focused on using this for gaming specifically is that it does have three HDMI ports, two of which are 2.1. So if you're rocking the full set of current systems with PS5, Xbox Series X, and a Switch, you're gonna have a port available for each one. Now, as I've mentioned, I've done a couple different projector setups in the past, and one of the things that's really interesting that stood out to me about this one uh, is the brightness of the display. It's a 2700 lumen display, which is actually not the brightest out there. It's not dim by any means, but there are brighter ones out there. Uh, and at that kind of brightness, especially when it comes to a projector, one of the things you can worry a little bit about is how daylight can interfere with the image and make it look more faded. Uh, however, this is the first projector setup I've worked with that includes an ALR screen. ALR stands for Ambient Light Rejection. And it's basically made out of this specific material, and instead of being the kind of white sheen you're used to seeing on a lot of projector screens, it's actually gray. Uh, it's designed to absorb the light coming from the projector better and reject light coming from other ambient sources like sunlight coming through your windows. And it works out in a way that's way better than I anticipated. Again, I didn't think the daylight performance was going to look unusable, but I didn't expect it to be as strong as it actually is. Uh, nighttime and darkroom use is definitely where this thing still flourishes the most, but you can use it during daytime and it still looks great. 
I mean, right now I'm shooting in the daytime and yeah, sure we have some of the curtains closed, but there's still plenty of natural sunlight breaking through into this room and this thing looks awesome. Now, of course, me being me, I'm focused on using this setup as something for gaming. However, a couple things worth noting for if you want to use it for a more kind of movie watching experience or of course mixed usage, this does have a filmmaker mode option. So what that effectively does is it disables all the kinds of additional post-processing stuff that you don't want on movies uh, to make sure that the film looks as the director in intended. And it does have an eARC pass through as well. So if you have a surround sound system, you can integrate that as all part of this setup. And look, all this stuff is cool, but ultimately I think the really big sales pitch of just using something like this to me is the size of it. I mean, I've used larger screen TVs before, but once you get into this hundred inch or as high as this one gets 120 inch territory, uh, it's a very different experience that really lends itself to social activities. Of course, I've been able to do local co-op stuff on smaller screens before, but when you have a display display this large to work with, it just hits completely different. Also, while I mentioned before, I think it is also worth emphasizing that, you know, for gaming, something that's really important is having a low response time to make sure things feel, you know, good while playing. Uh, and this one is capable of, in that low latency mode, hitting as low as 24 milliseconds, which is a good responsive speed. Because this is sold as a bundle, there is also a certain ease of setup that comes with this whole thing. You're given an estimation of how high of a stand to put the cinema projector on, how far away from the wall it should be. And in fact, there's even a step as part of the setup phase where to make things simpler, you can just take a photo of how your whole setup is put together and it figures out the right angles for the projector to be shooting at, which in full admits, took a couple tries. We had to upload a couple photos to get it to work, but after a couple attempts, it figured it out. And yeah, it filled the screen perfectly. So those are my experiences of using the L5G from Hisense. If you're interested in learning more about it or even grabbing one, I have a link down below in the description. Thank you so much again to Hisense for sponsoring today's video and sending this thing out to try out and game on. As always, if you enjoyed the video, hit the thumbs up button to let me know, subscribe if you haven't yet, and I will see you guys later.